Hey everybody, it's me here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something really cool, something a lot of you have been asking about, turning your phone into a hacking supercomputer. We're talking 10 steps to ultimate geek powers. Now before we jump in, massive disclaimer here, we're talking about serious tools with serious implications. Everything we're covering today is for educational purposes only. Use this knowledge responsibly, ethically, and only on systems you have permission to test. Don't be that person getting dragged off by the cyber police, all right? With that out of the way, let's get our hands dirty and turn this pocket computer into a lean, mean hacking machine. All right, step one to any serious phone modding. We gotta break free of these digital shackles. For you Android users, that means rooting. Essentially, we're getting root access, becoming the ultimate administrator of our device. This opens up a world of customization, and you guessed it, hacking tools that regular users can only dream of. Now, routing methods vary depending on your phone model, so no one-size-fits-all solution here. Head over to your favorite search engine, DuckDuckGo, anyone, and look up a routing guide specifically for your device. Be warned, this can void your warranty, so proceed with caution. For all you Apple fans rocking an iPhone, jailbreaking is the name of the game. Same idea as rooting. We're bypassing Apple's restrictions to install custom apps and tweak settings to our heart's content. Just like rooting, jailbreaking methods change all the time, so find a recent guide that matches your iOS version. Now I know what you're thinking. Linus, this sounds complicated and risky. And yeah, it can be. But trust me, the power we unlock is totally worth it. Plus, there are tons of resources and communities out there to help you along the way. Just be sure to follow instructions carefully and back up your data just in case. Once you're rooted or jailbroken, you'll feel the difference. It's like your phone just took a big old sip of freedom juice ready to flex its newfound muscle. And believe me, we're just getting started. Up next, we're outfitting our newly liberated device with the essential tools of the trade. Okay, we've got root access. Now let's give this bad boy some teeth. First up on our shopping list, Termux for Android or iEsh for iOS. These beauties let us run a Linux terminal right on our phones. That's right, we're talking full-blown command line interface, the hacker's playground. Think of the terminal like the Matrix, a world of pure digital power just waiting to be harnessed. Don't worry if you're not a command line guru yet, we'll walk through the basics. Trust me, once you get comfortable with the terminal, you'll be wondering how you ever lived without it. With Termux or ISH installed, we can start installing even more powerful tools. And the best part is, most of these are open source and completely free. We're talking network scanners, packet sniffers, even penetration testing frameworks all at our fingertips. Now I know this might be a lot to take in, especially if you're new to the world of hacking, but that's why we're here. We'll go through each tool step by step, explaining what it does and how to use it. By the end of this video, you'll be amazed at what your phone can do. Just remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben said it best. Always use these tools ethically and legally. Don't even think about targeting systems or networks that you don't have permission to test. Got it? Good. Now let's dive into the fun stuff. In the next chapter, we'll be channeling our inner digital detectives with some network scanning and sniffing. Get ready to see the invisible world of data flowing around you. All right, time to channel your inner digital detective. We're about to crack open the matrix and see the normally invisible world of network traffic buzzing around us. First up, network scanning. Imagine having X-ray vision for Wi-Fi, being able to see every device connected to a network. That's what we're talking about. The tool for the job, Nmap. Think of it like a bloodhound, sniffing out devices and services on a network. We can use it to identify potential targets, see what operating systems they're running, even fingerprint their services. It's like having a cheat sheet for the entire network, but wait, there's more. Once we've got our targets in sight, it's time to break out the packet sniffer, TCP dump. This bad boy lets us capture and analyze the actual data packets flying through the air. It's like tapping into the network's central nervous system. Now, before you go full on NSA on your neighbor's Wi-Fi, remember what we talked about, ethics people. Only scan and sniff networks you have permission to access. Your own home network is a great place to start practicing. With TCP dump, we can see things like usernames, passwords, website addresses, all sorts of juicy information. Don't worry, it's not as simple as reading plain text. We'll need to learn how to filter and interpret the data. 
but trust me, the insights we can gain are invaluable. So there you have it. We've got our network scanning and sniffing tools ready to go. In the next chapter, we'll be turning our attention to wireless networks. Get ready to crack some passwords and see just how secure your Wi-Fi really is. Chapter 4. Wireless Hacking Cracking the Code of Wi-Fi Security Hold on to your hats, folks, because things are about to get real interesting. We're diving headfirst into the world of wireless hacking, where we'll test the strength of those Wi-Fi passwords and see if those security protocols are really as tough as they claim to be. First up, we've got Aircrack Ang, the Swiss Army knife of Wi-Fi hacking. This suite of tools lets us capture wireless traffic, crack WEP and WPA slash WPA2 passwords, and even launch deauthentication attacks. Don't worry, we'll explain how each of these works. It's all part of the learning process. Next on our list is Reaver, a tool specifically designed to target WPS, Wi-Fi protected setup. Remember that button on your router that lets you connect devices easily? Well, turns out it can also be a security vulnerability. Reaver exploits this weakness to brute force the WPS pin and gain access to the network. Now, before you go all Mr. Robot on your neighbors, remember our golden rule ethical hacking only. Always get permission before testing the security of any network that isn't your own. The consequences of unauthorized access can be severe, and we don't want anyone ending up on Santa's naughty list. With Aircrack Ong and Reaver in our arsenal, we can really start to see the strengths and weaknesses of different Wi-Fi security protocols. We'll learn about things like encryption, handshakes, and brute forcing, all essential knowledge for anyone serious about cybersecurity. So buckle up, because the world of wireless hacking is full of twists and turns. In the next chapter, we'll be shifting gears slightly and diving into the world of web application testing. Get ready to find those sneaky vulnerabilities lurking beneath the surface of your favorite websites. Chapter 5, Web Application Testing, Exposing the Flaws in the Web We Weave. All right, time to put on our black hats, figuratively, of course, and dive into the world of web application testing. Now, this one's a bit different. While we can do some basic testing from our phones, we'll need to team up with our trusty desktop computers for the really juicy stuff. Think of it like this. Our phones are the nimble scouts, scoping out the battlefield while our desktops are the heavy artillery, ready to exploit any weaknesses we find. For this mission, we'll be using Burp Suite or OWASP Zap, two powerful web application security scanners. These tools act like virtual hackers, probing web applications for vulnerabilities like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and a whole host of other nasty exploits. Don't worry if those terms sound like gibberish right now. We'll break them down and explain how they work. Now here's where our phones come in. We can use them to browse the web application we're testing, acting as a proxy between our desktop and the target. This allows Burp Suite or Zap to intercept and modify the traffic, allowing us to test for vulnerabilities in real time. Remember, responsible disclosure is key here. If you find a vulnerability, report it to the website owner so they can fix it. Think of it like being a digital superhero, protecting the innocent from the forces of cyber evil. Web application testing is a vast and complex field, but with the right tools and knowledge, we can make a real difference in making the web a safer place. In the next chapter, we'll be taking our hacking skills to the next level with scripting and automation. Get ready to unleash the power of code. Chapter 6. Scripting and Automation Unleashing the Power of Code Hold on to your hats, folks, because things are about to get seriously next level. We're talking about scripting and automation, where we'll transform from button pushers to code-wielding wizards. That's right, we're going to be writing our own scripts to automate tasks, analyze data, and generally become unstoppable hacking machines. First things first, we need to choose our weapon of choice, Python or Bash. Don't worry, you don't need to be a coding ninja to get started. Both languages are relatively beginner-friendly, and there are tons of resources available online to help you learn the ropes. Python is like the Swiss army knife of programming languages. It's versatile, powerful, and can be used for everything from web development to data analysis to, you guessed it, hacking. Bash, on the other hand, is a scripting language that's built into Linux and Macos. It's perfect for automating system tasks and running multiple commands in sequence. Now imagine this. You write a script that automatically scans a network for vulnerabilities exploits those vulnerabilities, and then patches them up before anyone even knows what hit them. That's the power of scripting and automation. 
Of course, with great power comes great responsibility. Are you sensing a theme here? Always use your newfound coding skills ethically and legally. Don't even think about automating attacks on systems or networks that you don't have permission to test. Scripting and automation are essential skills for any aspiring hacker or cybersecurity professional. By learning to code, we unlock a whole new world of possibilities and take our hacking game to a whole new level. In the next chapter, we'll be focusing on staying safe and anonymous in the digital world with secure communication tools. Get ready to disappear into the shadows. Chapter 7. All right, time to talk about something absolutely crucial in the world of hacking staying hidden. We're talking about secure communication, making sure our messages and browsing habits are for our eyes only. Because let's face it, if you're poking around where you shouldn't be, you don't want to leave a trail of digital breadcrumbs. First up, let's ditch those plain text messaging apps and upgrade to something with some serious encryption. Signal is our go-to here, a messaging app that's so secure even Edward Snowden uses it. End-to-end -end encryption means not even Signal themselves can read your messages. Talk about peace of mind. Next, we need to tackle our browsing habits. Every website you visit, every link you click, it's all being tracked and logged, unless, of course, you're using Tor Browser. This bad boy bounces your internet traffic through a network of relays around the world, making it virtually impossible to trace back to you. It's like the invisibility cloak of the internet. Now I know what you're thinking, why do I need to be anonymous? I'm not doing anything illegal. And you're right, you might not be. But even if you're just researching security vulnerabilities or testing the defenses of your own network, it's always better to err on the side of caution. Plus, there's something inherently cool about being anonymous online. It's like becoming a digital ghost, free to explore the darkest corners of the internet without leaving a trace. Just remember, even with the best privacy tools, it's important to be mindful of what you say and do online. So there you have it. Secure Communication 101. With Signal and Tor Browser in our toolkit, we can browse and communicate with confidence, knowing that our digital footprints are well and truly hidden. In the next chapter, we'll be diving into the world of digital forensics, learning how to analyze evidence and uncover the truth behind cyber incidents. Get ready to put on your detective hats. Chapter 8. Time to switch gears and put on our detective hats, folks. We're entering the fascinating world of digital forensics, where we'll be analyzing digital evidence to uncover the truth behind cyber incidents. Think of it like CSI, but instead of fingerprints and DNA, we're dealing with ones and zeros. Now, just like with web application testing, we'll need to team up with our desktop computers for this one. Specifically, we'll be using tools like Autopsy and Volatility, powerful open source software designed for digital forensics and incident response. Autopsy is like our digital autopsy table, allowing us to analyze hard drives and smartphones for deleted files, browsing history, and other digital artifacts. We can even recover deleted messages and photos. It's like having a time machine for digital evidence. Volatility, on the other hand, is our memory analysis tool. It allows us to examine the contents of a computer's RAM, which can contain valuable information about running processes, network connections, and even passwords. It's like taking a snapshot of a computer's brain at the exact moment of a cyber incident. Now, before you go all Sherlock Holmes on your family and friends, remember that digital forensics is a serious field with ethical considerations. Always obtain proper authorization before analyzing someone else's devices. We don't want any legal trouble, right? Digital forensics is an incredibly valuable skill set for anyone interested in cybersecurity, incident response, or even just understanding how digital evidence can be used in investigations. It's like having a superpower that allows you to see the hidden stories behind every computer and smartphone. So there you have it, a crash course in digital forensics. With autopsy and volatility in our toolkit, we can uncover the truth behind even the most complex cyber incidents. In the next chapter, we'll be taking our hacking skills to the next level with exploitation frameworks. Get ready to unleash the big guns. Chapter 9. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to unleash the heavy artillery of the hacking world exploitation frameworks. These bad boys are like the Swiss Army knives of cyber offense, providing us with a vast arsenal of exploits, payloads, and tools to compromise vulnerable systems. One name reigns supreme in this domain, Metasploit. 
This open source framework is the gold standard for penetration testers and ethical hackers worldwide. It's like having a whole team of elite hackers at your fingertips ready to exploit any vulnerability you can find. Now, just like with digital forensics, we'll be teaming up with our trusty desktop computers for this one. Metasploit is a complex beast and it requires a bit more horsepower than our smartphones can provide. But don't worry, we'll walk you through the basics and show you how to use it effectively. With Metasploit, we can scan for vulnerabilities, exploit those vulnerabilities to gain access to target systems, and then use a variety of payloads to achieve our objectives. We can escalate privileges, steal data, even take complete control of compromised machines. But before you go all Skynet on us, remember our golden rule ethical hacking only. Metasploit is an incredibly powerful tool, and it should only be used on systems that you have explicit permission to test. The consequences of unauthorized access can be severe, both legally and ethically. Exploitation frameworks like Metasploit are essential tools for anyone serious about cybersecurity. By understanding how these tools work, we can better defend our own systems and networks from attack. It's like learning to fight fire with fire. So there you have it, a glimpse into the world of exploitation frameworks. With Metasploit in our arsenal, we have the power to compromise vulnerable systems and expose critical security flaws. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use this knowledge wisely and ethically. In the next chapter, we'll be cracking passwords like pros, so buckle up. Chapter 10. All right, folks, get ready for the grand finale, the piece de resistance of our hacking journey password cracking. We're talking about the art of breaking and entering, digitally speaking, of course. We'll be using sophisticated tools to crack those pesky passwords and expose the secrets hidden behind them. Now, before you get any ideas about breaking into your ex's social media accounts, let's be crystal clear. Password cracking should only be used for ethical purposes, like testing the strength of your own passwords or demonstrating vulnerabilities to clients. Unauthorized access is a big no-no and we don't want anyone ending up in digital jail. For this final act, we'll be wielding two powerful tools, John the Ripper and Hashcat. These bad boys are the heavy hitters of the password-cracking world, capable of brute-forcing their way through millions, even billions of password combinations per second. John the Ripper is like the seasoned veteran known for its speed and versatility. It's a command-line tool, so get those keyboards ready. Hashcat, on the other hand, is the young gun, leveraging the power of your graphics card to achieve blazing fast cracking speeds. We'll be exploring different password cracking techniques like dictionary attacks, brute force attacks, and even rainbow table attacks. Don't worry if those terms sound intimidating, we'll break them down and show you how they work. Remember, the goal here isn't to become a digital criminal. It's about understanding the importance of strong passwords and the techniques used to crack them. By learning how attackers think, we can better defend our own accounts and systems. So there you have it, a crash course in password cracking. With John the Ripper and Hashcat in our arsenal, we've got the power to expose weak passwords and highlight the importance of strong, unique passwords for all our online accounts. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use this knowledge wisely and ethically. And there you have it, folks. We've gone from zero to hacker heroes in just 10 steps, turning your everyday phone into a lean, mean hacking machine. Remember, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The world of cybersecurity is vast and constantly evolving, so never stop learning, never stop exploring. If you enjoyed this wild ride into the matrix, hit that like button harder than a DDoS attack. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on future tech adventures. Stay curious, stay ethical, and as always, happy hacking.